Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemanses, gentlemanses, to episode 28 of Thick and Thin with LB and Duty and Hitman. I'm going to do that from now on. Just marginal. No enthusiasm. Much. It's like LB and Duty. Oh, fucking Hitman's here. That's... But yeah, so <laughs> Thick and Thin is the show on the internet that you watch and we deliver you hot goods of information about gaming. Hot steaming goods. Hot goods. goods. Hot goods. With me, as always, my partner in crime, the man with a new chair that no longer squeaks. <laughs> L-V-S-U-T-K. What's up, buddy? That's right. Oh, check this out. Look. Let's see. I can move see around now. There's no squeaking. Oh, my God. I, I can love turn. love this. There's no squeaking. <laughs> yeah, I love your rigid okay. turning, too. Yeah, oh, you know, it's fun. fantastic. It's fancy. Yeah. And our foreigner from a completely different land, far, far away. He speaks another language, yet we understand him completely. Hey, man. What's going on? No much, no much. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> You're the guest that won't leave. That's just <laughs> why. Just show up. <laughs> you just show up. And we're like, oh, so, yeah, no, you can totally stay around. Hey, it's you again. Deal. Um, first of all, before we go on with the show, we're going to talk about community and all that other stuff that you guys pretty much hate that don't, you don't want to talk about because we've been doing it for an entire week. Um, but before we move on, we want to talk about the land because it's the most important thing happening on tool to play. There's nothing else going on tool to play right now that warrants any discussion, just the land. Uh, LB, when is the land for people that maybe don't know? Well, the official date of the LAN is November 9th through the 11th, 2012. Oh, good job. Yeah. I thought you might not. I was kind of doing that so that you wouldn't have info. I was putting you under no. pressure. No, but no. you have clearly ri risen to the occasion lately. You are a vid casting professional. Thank God we have you here. So if you haven't heard about it and you're living under a rock or you're just an asshole and maybe you don't want to go. Uh, it is November 9th through the 11th at the Hyatt Regency in Schaumburg, Illinois, just 15 minutes outside of O'Hare. So if you get on a cylindrical thing that has two wings and flies in the air and then lands in Chicago, you will be at the Chicago land if you do it November 9th through the 11th. Uh, if you don't know how to get there, go to tool to forward slash land. You have all the information there about how to register, how to get to the Kickstarter to get your ticket and how to get your ass to Chicago if you didn't know, in case you want to know, Halo number four is coming out on the 6th. So that means we will be all uh, for the first time ever playing Halo together, unboxing, unraveling. And we've all agreed that we're not going to play the game until uh, the 9th, right? That's, that's a fact now. Totally, we all agreed on that. That's definitely going to happen. Sure. That is a complete yeah. lie. <laughs> <laughs> No one's doing that. No one's doing that. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I'm not even doing that anymore. Who am I kidding? I'm actually excited now for Halo. But speaking of excitement today, and this is the first topic of the eve. I think we're going to do several topics today because there's a lot of fucking news today. One of which was Black Ops. Um, I was literally considering Black Ops a dead game. I had no intention of playing it anymore. And then today we're hit with some serious news. LB, give us a little bit of a wrap up on what we can expect from Black Ops 2. Well, today I saw on uh, Joystick and Kotaku that they're going to do a couple different things. They're going to do a shoutcast ability. They're going to have live streaming. They're going to have uh, the kill streaks, or there's like a set number for kill streaks. And then after that, it's going to be, I think it's called. A score streak where your team, you know, doing different things like objective or whatnot, helps contribute to a score streak, which then, I don't know, drops special shit or right. gives you extra stuff. But uh, I, I guess the the big stuff, and I guess for a lot of people who like to stream or or like esports or whatnot, is the shout casting and the the live streaming. Now they haven't gone into too much detail of of what the live streaming is going to be? Is it going to go straight to YouTube? Is it going to link up to Twitch? Is it going to be their own website you can go? But the, that ability is there. And then this whole shoutcast thing, I, I, I didn't know the term before. I had to have people explain it to me. But it's basically you can go there, drop in on somebody's game, and choose from six different angles, and you're like spectator mode. 
and you can just be like, yeah, and you know, two fats on the airplane shooting on kids, you know, shooting down over. <laughs> that's a great. At, uh, that's a great shout casting. Area C or whatnot, and you know, it just it was a lot of stuff, and it was like, holy shit, where where did this all come from? They were just like, all right, motherfuckers, you wanted like next level stuff or stuff you've been screaming about. Blam, here you go. This is what you got. So, it's pretty big, right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, what do you think, Hit? Are you are you excited about Black Ops now? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I went from def- uh, returning my, canceling my pre-order to going back possibly and trying to beg for forgiveness. But um, yeah, no, all the information today sounds amazing. I'm very excited. I, I just wonder if up. they can pull all this off. I mean, I guess that's my thing. I'm constantly disappointed with Black Ops. That's my new level. I The baseline is disappointed. And then usually I actually just go down from there. You know, I get more and more upset. Um, but this time around, I don't know. They're, it seems like they're doing something new with multiplayer that feels like it should be a standard now. I mean, would you guys agree that nowadays streaming's becoming more prevalent? People like to watch other people's games. YouTube clips are, you know, any anywhere you go in terms of discussing gaming, you're usually watching someone else play or analyzing play from another player. It feels like that's the direction we're going. Why is it, first of all, why is it Triarch that's doing it, right? Because this isn't even Infinity Ward. Why are they the ones doing this? And why haven't we seen this in games? Like, well, we don't know. Halo 4 could be like, oh, we have, we didn't want to say anything. We've had shout casting for years. And then they bust that out. But for now, they're the only ones that have it. Why the hell is this? Why haven't we seen this in every game? Especially Halo, LB? Well, I, oh. <laughs> honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, Triarch's actually been... They've been pretty good as far as innovation. I mean, they were the ones that you actually got to uh, send your clips to YouTube. They gave you that ability and props. Then eventually they came out where, you know, you could edit your own clips on there and do, uh, like, I don't know if they're called wave points or standard points, but you could set it so the camera would have a smooth pan and just follow those preset areas, like your little montage or whatever it is. So I think they've always been the ones to do any um right like they've got to be the ones to try something new because yes they're the underdog they're the constant underdog right i mean exactly i think that's part of it because they're always seen as the b squad or the second team or oh it's treyarch doing it well you know what they're the ones doing innovation and they basically say zero fucks we don't care we're gonna try this fucking out and here you go I, i like it i mean and Taxi in chat is saying basically that we're paying for bells and whistles and that there's no change in gameplay, which to a degree, I actually have to agree with tax. I mean, part of part of what sucks me into to blops usually is the promise of something new. But then when you uh, open the package, you play for a week, you realize you're playing the same game. Um, And I totally agree with that. Hoping they get all these things fixed, assuming there's no lag, assuming the hit detection is better. Let's make these assumptions. If they can do that, if they can pull that off, th- those are really the big problems I've always had with, with blobs. Is that, you know, I have shitty hit detection, the party system sucks, and the gameplay is redundant. If they can knock a lot of those things down and then create these new ways for me to share content, I don't know. As a guy, as a guy that does streaming, obviously that's that's something that appeals to me. There's no, you know, I can't deny that fact that we're on a stream right now. But on top of that, I think what they're doing with kill streaks is actually something different. And not only is it different, but the biggest problem that everyone's always had in most Call of Duty series is it rewards players that basically go out and they're their own lone gunman. It's the one thing that Halo, I think, has on any other FPS that's on console right now, is that in order to succeed at Halo, you must play with a party of players that will listen to you and that you'll listen to them. You work together to kick ass. It's not really the best solo game. It can be, uh, but I think it's built to be a team game. Whereas anytime you pick up blobs, it's like the, the most fun I ever have in blobs is at like two 30 in the morning when I'm half drunk and I get on by myself and I just shoot shit for an hour. You know what I mean? It's not, it's never been a game that I get into with a team and a squad. Uh, I feel like call of duty two, a long, long time ago, it was that game at one point. And to, and to shift the point-based system to go along with completing objectives, I think shifts the focus of the game to actually doing those objectives. I mean, don't you agree that 
once 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 the player is rewarded more and knows that they're going to get more out of the game for doing an objective, don't you think that will shift the gameplay into a hopefully more team based game? Or am I just fucking you know praying to God that it's going to happen? Well, I think it's it's going to be a slight shift. Uh, I still think the no shields thing really kind of prevents true gameplay because by the time you you know you're calling somebody out where you got shot you're already dead, they've moved on, and they're already on to like two or three other people with a couple of quick trigger pulls. Um, it'll help. I just don't know if it'll be a true Halo-style gameplay where you think of that whole calling out position where you actually have a, an opportunity to, if you start getting shot, at least get away to call for help type thing, but maybe somewhere approaching that. So you think a lot of it comes down to the shields because it requires more than one or two shots, which then involves team shooting. That's, that's your kind of exactly. your play on thing. Yes. I mean, what do you think hit? Do you think do moving to this objective based skill system will shift the play, or, or at the end of the day, people in call of duty just know that if they spray and pray, they're going to get a ton of kills. I mean, what, I mean, what do you think? No, I am. It, it'll only last for a little bit, but you'll always still have the little kid running around that won't care. It, it's a good uh, gameplay change, but at the end of the day, it's still shoot and kill. And mo- a lot of people, stupid people on the internet, as we know, will just forget about that stuff and do their own thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I don't know. I mean, I feel like if a lot of the the allure of what you play in most Call of Duty series was, and they've taken a lot of this out too, was like, I need to get as many kills as I can because I got to get a tactical nuke. Because that was the ultimate like, lol, fuck you. I just shit all over your face. I mean, it's any time that you have an ability that allows you to end a game at will uh, is probably going to be overpowered. And I know a lot of people like that and they want that back, which I understand because getting it felt really, really good. But in terms of a gameplay balance, I think that always shifted it in the wrong direction, which was it rewarded players for being campers, not only campers, but also solo players. Because the only way to really get, well, the easiest way to really get those 25 kills was to kind of bitch out, right? You'd like sit in a corner, you'd hide as much as you could, you'd take forget your little... Forget about your team. Forget about your yeah. team, yeah, and forget about the objective. I mean, come on. There's no objective if you want to get that that 25 kills because you're not going to be in the battlefield. You're not going to be trying to progress the game forward. And so you just end up with these guys that sat in corners and dark alleys and whatnot, and they just shot you, right? I mean, that's, and they realized this luckily, and they said, we got to take this out. And the game, I think, has been slowly moving into this sort of, let's get it back to the team-based way of playing the game. And while this may not be a fix-all, I think if you take the cumulative amount of things that they're doing in this game, you can see that they really want it to be a contender in the MLG arena. Why else are they letting you stream and why the fuck would they let you shout cast? Clearly they want you to play as a team and clearly the direction is shifting into getting it into a team style of play, whether they actually make it there. I don't know. I mean, was there anything else uh, that they added in the, in the big dump that was, uh, was it, was of worth or is that pretty much summing it up? Uh, they're going to do like a, uh, skill, um, Matching up option, I don't know the exact word, but apparently you can go in before going into multiplayer, selecting yes, match up with people like my skill, play a little bit, it kind of ranks you, and then it will just stick you, or it'll try to stick you with people of your same skill level, whatever quantifier they use, instead of just going into matching player, or sorry, multiplayer, and uh, getting either a bunch of, you know, freaks who just run around the map and don't really give a shit, or you got a full clan that's you know, play the map 9 billion times. At least this time, you're you're guaranteed a little bit more consistency with it. Yeah. And and, and, to, and I guess even to go deep, in, what do you think about that that addition of the whole 10-point uh, system? I believe each player, what, they get 10 points, they can they put get it... 10 in, points to spend, yeah. Okay, so how does that work? They get 10 points to spend, but they can spend it on anything? How does that work in terms of them, them building their character hit? You, like, everything will cost money, so... Um, like a gun will be maybe three points. Um, and then if you don't want a pistol anymore, you can use that as one point and get an extra grenade hmm. instead of one, you get two. So everything's got to add up to 10 at the end of the day. And that, that's how you get your class. So it's basically more of a, a, a buffet, I guess, instead of like yeah. they pick a class for you, you sort of get to pick and choose. Yeah. And it is kind of like, uh, like Counter-Strike I said in that way. I mean, it's, it's, 
you you get to pick how you want your class to be rounded, which more options I can't, again, I can't really frown upon more options. I love options. Um, and I think a lot of the other problems with FPSs nowadays, and this goes back to a, a cast that we did like, I think it was like one of our first vid casts where we talked about how RPGs are in pretty, or yeah, wasn't that the cast we did? Like we were saying those elements are now kind of reaching everywhere, the role yeah. playing games. Um, this kind of solidifies that even further by saying, you know, on a granular level, you can sort of mix and match all these different perks and all these different things and really build something that you want to build with your tune, which I love. Again, I love that type of stuff. So I guess I'm excited for Black Ops 2. I would show the trailer. I would do that for you guys right now, but they'll just try to sue us. So unfortunately, I can't because last time we tried to show a trailer, they sent us a cease and desist. So we can't do that. But if you can imagine, it looked pretty good, right? And I guess, how are they How are they doing the... So each point you get, I guess, you get... Or each... What they're calling them points now, right? Skill points, not perks. Or I don't even know what they're calling them now. Or they're kill streaks. What are they called? Point streaks? It's kind of a gay name. Score streaks. Score streaks. Yeah. And I guess each one you get, you get an unlockable that you can then use. And a lot of them seem team-based too. I don't know if you saw a lot of the unlockables, but one of them they showed was like that sort of sound wave deal that shot forward and it slowed enemies around you. Yeah. That's so, that is some serious RPG shit right there. Like, it's like a trap. Like, you actually get to lay a trap in an FPS scenario and uh, slow down characters. I think that's pretty dope. I mean, you guys like that type of stuff or no? Am I, am I by myself in this? I don't know. Well, I mean, uh, it all depends is. on... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Hit. No, 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 go ahead. Well, I think it depends on how it's going to affect gameplay. If it's going to be, you know, those one particular things where you sit down and just totally breaks it, where, like, the first team gets it, they set it up, and then match over, right. uh, then, yeah, that, that can kind of fuck yeah. stuff up. But if it's if it's balanced out enough where, okay, yes, they have it, but then you can kind of do some other stuff to kind of counter it or easily flank it or whatnot, if you've got that nice mix, I think it'll be all right. Yeah. And BC, BC is saying in, sh in chat that I have fl uh, I'm having flashbacks to when I was so hyped about Shadowrun. Let me just say this: I still to this day loved Shadowrun. I thought it was a great game. It didn't catch on with a lot of people, um, but I loved the game. So I, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. And let me let me say this: I'm sick about the fact that I'm actually excited for Black Ops Two. I'm not excited that I'm excited. Uh, I again, I wrote it off. I saw it at E3. I was. I didn't really give a shit. I've never cared about the campaign. I don't care about the characters, but I don't know. It's maybe that's the fact that they're doing something different. And it's probably due to the fact that for the last, what, six months, we haven't had good game. Like we haven't played shit for like six months. There has not been a game that anyone in any community that has played that they've been super excited about. It's just been a terrible drought. And maybe it's the fact that in the next four or five months, there's like 8 million games that look pretty decent. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I, do you, I mean, is that, what do you think hit? You think it's coming down to the fact that we just need something and we're just clinging on to anything we can get or are these games actually good? I mean, maybe not even, you know, just, just plus, but all these games, are, are we all just too hyped? No, I don't think we're too hyped. It's just each one, each game comes out with some sort of new information that we like more and more. Like today's news, everything about Call of Duty that came out today it sounds amazing. It sounds new and fresh, and it, I found myself actually not liking this news. Whoa! For what you said, because now you're excited for Call of Duty, and like we shouldn't be. We should be excited about Halo, <laughs> and and it, I don't know. It just this news bugs me. I I live. I like the live streaming option because I live stream myself. I like the shell casting feature and everything, but it's like, why doesn't Halo Four have that shit? Let's do let's or, do a little hits rant well, here. Yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> well, I mean, like, to be fair, we like, don't I know. I kind of touched upon it. it. We don't know. I, yes. Yeah, we don't know. And apparently today at eight o'clock and eight minutes, there's some there's supposed to be some sort of huge Halo Four news coming out. I'm kind of curious just to see what that is, but I don't know. It bugs me that like a game like Halo doesn't have a feature like this. Like, why? Why did it have to be Treyarch or Call of Duty? Like, what's wrong with three four three or even Battlefield? Like, they they don't even have it. I, I touched upon it last week with um, Hugh. It's like if you want to be considered an esports title, you gotta have 
right? Certain uh, features got to be in there. or yeah. esports support, and Halo doesn't have that, and it's weird. It just it bugs me. Like Call of Duty gets it. Why don't you guys get it? Kind of thing. Well, well, Deep is saying in chat that it's a it's a bandwidth issue. I mean, I don't know if you guys buy that. Yeah, that's another is thing that... about this news is like, can they really uh, support this feature? Like, I don't see it working right away. Uh, but at least that they have this feature is kind of cool. But I, I don't see them this working like right off the bat. Flawlessly. There's gonna be a lot of laggy games and stuff. But at least they're trying. At least they're just trying to support esports. And fucking Halo doesn't do it right now. And bugs me. Wow. So I mean, Sorry. does that does that make you any less interested in Halo Four, or is the fanboyism in you so strong that you you don't no, care? I, I mean, you're obviously gonna buy Halo I, anyway, right? I was going to buy Halo anyway, right. but I had Call of Duty canceled, and now I'm going to go back and pre-order it. So th- there's been a shift today, and yeah, it took a little bit away from Halo, and it's, it kind of bugs me. Is that confirmed? Deep saying in chat, too, that it's uh, that the shout casting is PC only. I don't. I mean, I didn't read that it was PC only, so I don't know. Not that I've read. I read that the options are for both PC and Xbox, but he could be right. I don't know. Yeah. Well, in the yeah, I mean, uh, it seems weird. joystick article, they said it was console and PC. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah, it says console again. and PC on Kotaku as well. Yeah. Interesting. Who knows? But, well, we'll have to see. I mean, as it, still, as it develops. At least they're supporting it. At least they're throwing it out there. Meaning the first one's out the gate to try this kind of thing. I, I think that's really what it comes down to. I mean, I don't necessarily care if, if Blops succeeds in being a great game. It's the feature sets that I like to see. It's the improvement that I like to see in the game design that warrants the purchase. I like to see at least them, they they take risks, right? And when you think of Call of Duty, I think the last thing you think of is risk. I mean, can we agree to that? We've been playing Mm -hmm. the same Call of Duty game since Modern Warfare, since it first started. We're, We're basically buying the same game, and Tank talks about it all the time on Tool to Play as well. You buy the same, you're buying the same title. You spend 60 bucks every year, you get the same title, you play the same title over again. Maybe there's new maps, and in fact, most of the time, it's the same fucking map that you just bought again because they decided to up the polygon count or whatever. And we're coming at the end of this council, which is essentially a dead council. They need to give us this f 720 tomorrow. Uh, that's another gripe of mine. But at the end of a cycle, when you see a game like this come out at least trying something new, I can't help but... It, but put my differences aside of how I've treated the series in the past and maybe give them an opportunity that I normally wasn't. I mean, is that, is that fair? Yeah. I th- do you think LB as a gamer to, you've got to support these ideas. I think at some point, um, if you want to see them further in other games, no, absolutely. You got to, you got to fucking try it. If you, you know, you can't just go oh, new maps, new, ma- new maps, new maps. Oh, and now you can carry two weapons, right? No, there, there's gotta be something else that you're going to at least try to push this whole thing forward. And uh, I'm kind of with Hit. I mean, yes, we don't know all the details for Halo 4. We don't know because they haven't released it, and they could have something mind-blowing amazing. But until that point, and if they don't, there is a question, why aren't they at least trying? Why aren't they at least being like, Mm -hmm. hey, we're going to try this shout casting, or, oh, we're going to do this thing where you can log into Halo Waypoint and and uh, watch your buddies play or something like that or you know at least pull up previous games and watch them without us charging for you because at least you could still upload clips in blops and not get right. charged for it right. so I don't know a lot of the corporation speak that I don't like and saw from Bungie and sometimes some stuff I've seen from 343 just drives me fucking insane yeah And and I think that kind of brings us to the next thing we're talking about today, which was community. And if you guys, if if you're a listener of the show, if you're not a part of Tool to Play or whatever, the big thing on Tool to Play right now, everyone knows it, is that we've been talking about clans. Uh, And the reason I really wanted to bring Blops into it, and especially Halo, uh, those two FPSs in general really need to create a sense of community if they want their game to survive. I think that's inherently why a lot of people originally played Halo 2. Halo 2 was a great game. I don't think anyone's going to say that it it wasn't. I mean, some people probably hate it. Maybe it wasn't for them. But you can't deny the success of Halo 2. I think we can all agree to that. I would always say that one of the things, the driving force with Halo 2 that made it the game that it really became in terms of a community was the party system. At that time in gaming, especially on the console, 
there was absolutely no game. And I, I, I mean, I, there was no game, not one, not two, none, just Halo 2 that created a party system that made it easy for friends to meet, easy for friends to play, and easy for friends to get in and out in a quick period of time with no real lag. And at that time, that was amazing to do on peer-to-peer. Uh, and that is what created the community that Halo then, that the driving force of console FPS. I think, yes, the game was great, but if you were to ask me why did the game succeed for as long as it did, I would say it was the it was the clans. I mean, what did you agree? And this is something that I think everyone has been pissed off about since Halo 2. Wouldn't you agree that them adding the clan system in Halo 2 was probably one of the best things they did and probably one of the worst things they could have taken out when Halo 3 came out? But not just the friends list, but having that clan in Halo 2. Would you agree, Hit, that that was one of the driving forces behind the success uh, of, of Halo 2, or or am I just maybe, I don't know, pie in the sky, thinking of the past? Uh, it was, uh, clan support in Halo 2 was awesome. I don't understand why they took it away, especially in the day and age that we live now where uh, you only have 100 friends on your list. It'd be nice to have, like, a second list. Um, but back then, it was awesome. You join a clan, they, you can get roles in the clan, like clan leader. Or, right. Although uh, there were like four different roles, um, fight other clans in matchmaking and have like a win loss record. That was that was awesome back then. It really brought, it really made sense to join a clan. Right. Back then. What do like, you think? Oh LB? man, I joined profanity back right. then. You had your tag. I mean, what what do you think, LB? Was that a driving force for you to play? I mean, was it a reason for you to log on, or was the game enough? I mean, we were we were all in clans back then, so we can at least all agree that. They must have had some necessity, and and most of us are still in clans today. But they've sort of evolved. I mean, looking back, if you can kind of remember, was that sort of the driving force for you to be playing Halo? Um, I don't think it was like the driving force where it was like, oh my god, you know, if if I can't be in my clan, I'm never playing Halo Two again or Halo. Right. You know, that wasn't it. But it did enhance my enjoying of the game. It did add on to it. Um, and today, there's still a lot of guys that I still play with or hang out because of it. Right. And so, but that's, and I, I think we've, this is one of the main threads that we've been talking about on the site right now is a lot of people are saying, like, do we need clans anymore? Um, I'm still of the perspective that we do. And from where I come from now, the only remaining value left on a clan, and this is just me, uh, is the friendship that you built up. So, and that friendship is mobile now. It doesn't really require you to be a part of a clan on Xbox Live. You don't need to be on a site, on a website. You don't need to be, and, and that's probably not the best thing to say coming from a site like Tool to Play, but I still think it's valid that what's left over from that sort of era of joining a clan in a video game is just the friendships that you've created. And once that era passed with Halo 2, where we sort of went from one video game that everyone was playing to multiple, you sort of lost that need inside the game to have a clan. Um, I mean, what do you, I guess my question to you, LB, is what are some of the things that have shifted in gaming that sort of let the shackles of clans, the, the need of less clans? Like, why is that sort of kind of been the thing? Outside of just, you know, your daily chat saying, Hey, how you doing? How's the kids? And all that nonsense that we do on a regular basis ourselves. What is left over, if anything, to keep a clan going? Is there a reason to even have one nowadays outside of that? You mean specifically for just gameplay itself or just daily interaction? I would say just for game. I mean, does a game, does being in a video game nowadays even require you to be in a clan? I think it did in the past. Like Hit said, we had these sort of clan versus clan things, and everything was very team-based. Even inside of Halo 2, if you wanted to get anywhere, you really wanted to be in a team of players. But now, I think what's happening is we're seeing that shift, and it definitely happened with Call of Duty, of us versus the rest of the internet. Whereas back then, I felt like it was more of us as a team versus each other. Clans played each other, and there was more of that back and forth. But now, since we've got this RPG element where we've got to level up, it's us versus Timmy. So... In that respect, and you can even say I'm wrong, uh, do you think that there is a place for a clan nowadays because we have that sort of us versus the internet feel to FPSs? I think it's more if you are a super hardcore competitive gamer and that's it. I mean, you find no enjoyment 
<laughs> in a game unless it's it's all about being able to compete, then yes, it has its place. But if you know, if you're a little bit of mixer or everything, or if you're not super competitive or whatnot, I, I don't think it's a driving force for you any longer. I mean, what do you think, Hit, for your daily for your day to day gameplay? Um, do you rely on a clan to get those games together? Or is it just sort of now that you've gone through this? I, I almost want to say it's just because we've had a long history now with the Xbox. We've all been on our Xboxes and our Xbox 360s. We've built the friends list up. We've got the crew that we play with. Play with. Do you, you, do you need a clan specifically now to play your video game? Or is it really just sort of, hey, these are my friends and these are who I play with? Nowadays, when I jump online in a multiplayer game, I, I need someone to play with. I, I, I don't like going into matchmaking by myself um, and running into guys with no mics or guys that don't want to play as a team or don't know what a strat, a strat is on the map. Um, so I do find clans helpful in the sense that I can look go on my friends list, see what clan mates are on, and then jump in with them and i know that they're as to a similar skill level as me like if i were to play with my real life friends there's some of them aren't really good <laughs> and they're not on a lot and so <laughs> having a clan for me is helpful because i can always f- find people to play with yeah yeah but and, and i guess it goes back to the need for and I, I it's almost like there's two terms that i think we're talking about with clan um clan started out as this sort of I don't know you very well. You don't know me very well, but we both like Halo. So let's get in a clan and our skill levels are similar. Our interests are similar and let's play this game. Uh, and I, I totally attribute that to Halo 2. I really do. Before Halo 2, I used to play a lot of P, uh, PC FPS. I played a lot of Doom, Quake and all those games. And there were clans back then. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there were definitely tons of clans back then, but you didn't really see them nearly as often as you started to see them in Halo 2. And I think... A part of that reason, again, goes back to the design of the game and how you were built, that system was built into the game. And so it became second nature to be in a clan. You found friends, you found people online that you had a similar interest with, you you got into their clan online, and then it populated your friends list automatically and you all you saw all those people. Nowadays, you don't really need that anymore because those people kind of shifted over to your friends list and you have this list of people that may or may not be in your clan, but you play with them all the time. So then the clan sort of shifted to more of the social aspect and less about gaming. So we've got sort of clans back then, which was for actual video games and clans now, which is more for just the the interaction of things. I mean, so I guess you see a value in even using clans for um, for gaming discussion because that's that was a big thing on Tool to Play too was you know what do we what do we use these clans for we know for sure that private clans are a great thing to have to do that daily you know how are the kids how's the wife going to a wedding sort of thing but outside of that now is there a value for the game time is there a value for them to sort of talk about the game in, in that area or would it be better for them to sort of maybe move out and meet some new people what do you think Elby? Well, I, I think with, uh, you know, the ability to, to Facebook somebody or to, you know, message them on your phone or whatnot, you're going to have, if you need that inclusive sharing where it's, you know, it's really personal or whatnot, you can do that without having it on a video game or a video game site. Um, is it a necessity? Is it something that, you know, you can't find with anybody else if you go out into another forum or another area to discuss things I, I I think you can just get that I mean I don't think if you were to post on Tua to play a, a strategy for game X you know I, I think somebody else would either comment on, on game X for that strategy whether they approve or disapprove or even if they have a, a counter to that and you can still find that right so I, I guess it really just comes down do you need it for specific gameplay Again, it's limited. If if you need it for the social aspect, then I can see that. Then, you know, there's that. Yeah, I mean, and and it's as deep as bringing up kind of the past too. How when you had the old sort of clans back then, you had to be really careful about who you talk to. It was like if you were in one clan and you know someone invited you to their clan night, it was like, why? What are we talking about? Why are you trying to be in another clan? You can't be doing that shit. 
And, th- and even that sort of, I would say even today, there's still a little bit of that left. Wouldn't you agree? Like if you're in a clan, generally speaking, there's that community within a community and it gets really, really strong. Like that, that bond is very hard to break. Uh, and so I guess moving the topic even further out there, do you think, is there a hindrance that comes on at some point? Is there a sort of um, barrier that people put up once they're in that clan? Maybe as the clan dwindles, are they able to even accept new members? I mean, we've seen we've seen so many different things with clans on Tool to Play, so it's really a, a kick-ass topic. And in terms of like social research, if I could do it, I would love to do it on the lifespan of a clan because we see tons of different things happen. We see clans that grow really, really big, and they get really, really insular, and they leave. Or we see clans that they're so insular that as the attrition happens, and that's natural in any video game, I think you guys can all agree, people stop playing games at some point. Um, as attrition happens, they, they're, they become so insular that they don't go out and get new people. And then you see these clans with like 10 or 15 people. Um, I don't know, maybe that's okay for them. And and that's probably true for a lot of people. They find their set of people and that they're happy with those people. Um, but what do you think about that? LB? I mean, do you think for you at least, and again, personal opinion, do you think that it matters for you to kind of go out and play with new people? Or do you think at the end of the day, if you've got your two or three people you play with, you really don't care? I mean, what do you think? My first, well, all right, when I log on, I'm first looking at my friends list to of see course. if my buddies are on to play. That's the first thing. If nobody's there or, you know, if, if you know, I'm checking the site or whatnot or have a previous conversation with on there, yeah, I might be like, well, you know, let's try these people out, see if they play the game that, you know, maybe my clan's moved on from playing. Or maybe people from my clan don't play that game anymore, but I still love to play it then I'm almost forced to kind of interact with other people and find more people to, to share my same interests. So, I mean, kind of one example for me is like Badfield 3. You know, I started playing out there and, and you know, I started meeting new people and, and I kind of play with them a lot now in Battlefield 3, where a lot of people from my specific clan really don't. In fact, I think there's like two or three of us that play Battlefield 3 in my specific clan. So does that mean I want to dish off my buddies that I've known for the past five or seven years? No, but you know, it doesn't mean I can't have other friends or just, you know, maybe meet more people and maybe they share like stuff that I do. Right. Um, and what do you think, Hit? I mean, is it, is it to your own gaming detriment to sort of stick to the same player group or do you think it's better for you to maybe to get out there? Uh, I'll play with whoever. I, I don't mind. I, it's more of a whoever gets in my line of sight, that's who I'll play with. Right. <laughs> like right now I have exposure to like the Halo forum, the Battlefield forum. If I see people on there being like, hey, I want to play, I'm going to jump in. Like um, last Thursday with Deep's um, community Halo Reach thing, I saw that the people wanted to play. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll come play. I, it didn't have to be a clan specific thing, but that's just it for me. Like, if if someone in another clan posts, hey, let's play X game, I won't know about it, so I won't know how to play with those guys. So I just really see who wants to play what game, and I'll try to play with them as much as I can. See, I think I'm the worst offender of all. I think you guys are even better than I am. because I, And I think LB will probably agree. I am I only play with like certain people. Maybe it's because I don't play a lot, but if I was to... like you know, try to think of the person that's the biggest offender of being insular. It's me. I mean, generally speaking, if I'm going to play a new game, I have to hype up one of my friends so much that it forces them to purchase it. I'm like LB part two, <laughs> you know, I'll, I will be like, you got to get this game. We're getting this game. We're going to get this game. It's gonna be the greatest game you ever played. And it'll suck, but at least I'll have that one friend to play with. So I think a lot of the reflection that happened on tool to play, and it, it was even for me personally was, I don't really play with anyone anymore. Um, And that just happened out of the way that clans were designed. It happened from me joining a clan early, early on in Halo 2, forming a clan rather, it getting decently large, us not having room for everyone. And that sort of, I played with a singular group of, you know, maybe five, six players that I played with all the time. Um, I got really snobby about it. Gunny base is putting it in chat. It's very true. Got really snobby about it. And that sort of just kind of ended there. I never really got back to what happened in the first place, which was just meeting random people on the internet and finding out that we were 
actually like each other and played video games together. So I sort of fell into this sort of, you know, redundant thing of playing the same games with the same people. But then, you know, I meet new people all the time now and I kind of get out there and play with people I didn't used to play with. And I'm finding like, wow, I don't really need to be in one clan or in one area. And I think a lot of people in chat have put it best when they say, you know, can you do both? I think you totally can. I mean, I think that's the, I think that's the great thing is just maybe being open to both and not so insular in, in your thinking. Like I said, I'm still not the best at it. I still do it all the time. LB will confirm. And I think LB is a little, uh, a little like that as well. In me. Maybe less than me. No? You kind of get out there. But really, I mean, are you, you're not like a... Are you, are Wait, you saying, hold on. But, dude, like, if you go online and okay. you open your friends list... Like, say you pop in Battlefield 3, you open your friends list, and you see no one that you know. Do you turn the game off, or do you try to play it? Mm, that's a really good That's a really good question. I, it, you know what? It depends <laughs> on the game. And I think this goes back to the original discussion of clans, too. At some point, when you're in a clan for as long as you are, and, and Halo is always the best, the best barometer of this, because, again, it started with clans, and it'll end with clans with Halo. I mean, that is inherent in the game's design. I think if I was to pop on Halo Reach, a game that I currently despise and hope that it burns in hell, and all you guys were playing Reach, I would play Reach. So a lot of it has to do with the friends that I've accumulated over time directly pulls me into games that I might, I might not even ever buy on my own, let alone play on my own. And so, and Halo started to be that for me. For the longest time, I was a Halo freak. I mean, I started a website about it. You might have heard of it. It's called TotalPlay.com. Um... And that's all I played. That's all I wanted to play. And honestly, at that time, I don't know if the, if, I mean, the friends would have mattered, but less so now. Now when I have friends and they want to play Reach with me, that's the only way I'll play it. I will not play a game like that by myself. Whereas if you talk about, you know, any of the newer games or a game I'm trying to get into, while I do need to have a player there with me, uh, it's not a total, like it's not, it won't kill the game for me. I mean, I don't know when you when you get on now, hit and you go to Halo. Do you play Halo by yourself? Do you like actually get in there, rank up, yeah, whatever? I'll, I mean, what I'll do you go do? I'll go on. I'll check the list. If there's no one on, I'll I'll go into matchmaking and try to meet new people. And if someone jumps online for my friends as well, I'm trying to play. I'll, I'll always go back after each game and check to see who's on. But I'm I'll, I'm down to play with whoever. It's just as long as they, I can see them, as long as they're in my line of sight, they're on my friends list, or they send me a message, or I know that something's happening at a certain time, then I'll I'll try to play around. But unless I don't, unless I see, it, I I can't do it. Now, what about you, LB? Do you play? I I feel like you're more of a gamer like me. I mean, I could be making an assumption here, but. Is I mean, don't you think we're a little bit similar in the sense that I, I mean, I don't know if I catch you ever online solo playing a game well it, it's on well you hardly ever play xbox anyway, that's a so fact really no yes but uh for me it's more game specific if it's you know halo reach or halo 3 if my buddies aren't online and or you know people from my friends list not specific you know clan mates are online if they're not online i really won't play but i'll hop in the bf3 and play solo oh yeah yeah, I do it. I do it a lot. You know, if the guys aren't on in mid afternoon, or if nobody's on, I'll go in and play like gun game, or you know, try to rank up a, a weapon or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll play. I don't care. Wow. So for me, it's more game specific. Yeah. So I guess I guess we are kind of some of that. I mean, like you know, I'll play WoW or something by myself. I mean, but you're never really by yourself in an MMO, so it's kind of hard to say that as fact. I, I don't know. I guess for the for the final question, the biggest thing for me, and this is where I think a lot of the stuff on Tool to Play kind of got mixed around and, and all this other thing is we, we were talking about why there's less activity on the main forums than there are on the clan forums. Um, and the biggest, one of the biggest responses as to why that is, and one I really can't ignore and I have to totally agree with, uh, at least in some respect, is there are no games to play. And this is what we talked about at the top of the show, the reason we were... The reason we bought Black Ops into it and games like that that are sort of pushing community again. Um, do you think, I mean, either of you guys, do you guys think that maybe the biggest reason for clans and the biggest reason for for keeping clans around and having being in a clan is for when we get these games to finally launch? Because right now, 
there is there anything to even talk about outside of a clan? How you doing? Where you going? How's life? What else is there for a clan until we see these games? I mean, is is that really it? Is the biggest problem that gaming in general has just been shitty? I mean, what do you guys think? Because it's been shitty, right? I mean, we know that it's been shitty. Well, Halo has taken a considerable dive in popularity. Um, and that's a big part of Tool to Play, or was at one point. Right. Uh, so maybe that affected it. Um, I mean, we're, it seems like we're waiting for Halo 4. Like At least that community is waiting for Halo 4. Like The Forza community, they have great titles coming out every couple of years. You don't see them stop stop playing like the, the latest Forza. Like we have stopped playing the latest Halo. Right. Uh, or maybe it's just game specific to for clans. I mean, that's the thing. LB, like, do you think if I guess this is the big question? Do you think Halo Four, honestly, will be the salvation that a lot of people I think think it will be in terms of bringing community back? Or do you think that once those clans are formed, the lines have been drawn, there's a, it's too solid, it's unbreakable, and really there's no flexibility? I mean, I think those are the two, sort of the two sides that people have taken, is that a lot of it comes down to the fact that we don't have Halo, it's in its dying year with Reach, not a lot of people liked Reach, which I, I think I would agree with. Um, what do you think? I mean, do you think Halo 4 is going to be the thing that kickstarts it, or do you think we're just kind of... This is the way it's going to be. In my well, honestly, in my opinion, if if you're betting on it, if you're like Halo Four is going to be my survivor or savior, you've already lost. Right. <laughs> and I, I'm not saying it because it's Halo Four. If your opinion is Bops Two is going to be my savior, you've lost because it's if it's not already there, you're not going to have it. Right. So I have hope that it's going to be fantastic and and does magic and rainbows and unicorns but oh, i love rainbows and unicorns i'm not gonna hold my breath yeah and, t- and tank said it too i mean i don't know if we're putting pressure on 343 i don't know if that pressure is on do i mean th- look these guys have a shit ton riding on this game it's yeah. like there is no question that at least for me this is a make or break situation Reach was sort of the, the and Bungie's even said it, it was their swan song, it was their, you know, all this bullshit that they fed us about Reach and I was gonna, the best Halo game they ever made, whatever. Um, but it's, I feel, I, I feel terrible. I feel terrible for 343 because I think they're in an impossible situation. If they, if they fuck this up, I don't know that it matters that they have a contract for the next two games. I don't know that it means dick after they screw this up uh and that goes along with the community as well i think you know a lot of the survival at least of halo clans and stuff like that it's kind of pinned to this there's there's a little bit of truth to what we said that once a clan once a game dies in a clan and once a clan decides we no longer play this game as a clan it's very hard for that clan to then pick up a new game and all together play that one thing i will say that you see in tool to play is when a when a clan decides they're done with like let's say Halo and they're like oh we're a multi clan sort of thing a lot of those clans die only because not everyone agrees to play the next whatever not everyone agrees to play Call of Duty or whatever some clans survive some clans do very well in that in that area but I would say the majority that we see we see the slow attrition like I said and then we kind of see the we just keep up with each other's daily lives and we don't actually play anymore so I mean I don't know. Will will three four three be the savior? I gotta agree with you, LB. I gotta say, if anyone banks on them, they're fucked. Like that's they're already fucked. The pool's too diluted right now. Yeah, Halo Two. There were no games back then. It was just yeah. Halo Two. Now that the pool's so diluted, you got the Call of Duties, the Battlefields, the Halos, the MMOs. Everything is too much for one game to become that savior. It's a different time now. Yeah, I there's no way that Halo Four will be a savior. So you think no matter what, like even if this is the greatest Halo of all time, it'll be a shot in the arm. Right. Don't get me wrong; it definitely be a shot in the arm. Maybe three months. Right. But I don't see it being like we'll be playing Halo Two in three years from now. No. Like that kind of thing. What about you, Albie? You think the the days of just like 
the ultimate game coming. I mean, we've, we've talked about this even with MMOs. Like, you know, there's tons of MMOs now. It's not just Warcraft. There's tons of FPS. It's not just Halo. Can we ever see numbers like we used to in terms of a community around one game? Or, or do you think those days are done? I think it, it needs a mountain of effort to do that. I mean, right. honestly, if whatever company wants to be that, I think it's possible. But you need to not just up your HD pixel count on your previous game for the next game. You need to do something different. You need to go outside the box and include everything that made your game great and then stick something big on top of it. Right. And that's the only way I think you can see one company be like, or one game just draw mass from every other game possible. And I don't know that that comes off sequels anymore. I mean, we, we've talked about this on several shows as well. And I don't want to go over time because we're, we're kind of wrapping up. But I think in terms of community and building a community like we originally did with Tool to Play, I don't know that sequels can do, they have that power. I mean, I think it's very rare to play a game. And Halo 2 is a sequel, so obviously it can happen. Um, but th- in this day and age, we're, we're, we're really getting on with the sequels. You know what I mean? We're in, what, four on Halo. We're in 87 on Call of Duty. Uh, there's so many now and the rehashing is getting so ridiculous that I don't know that a company like 343 or Triarch or any of these companies that made these giant games have it in them to, to innovate. I don't know that they even can innovate because they're too afraid to piss off their, their, their consumer base. And I don't know if you guys saw last week's show. I mean, some of you guys in chat, you could go to tool to play right now and check it out. Uh, we had a guy on from, from uh, his name is Hugh Jeremy. He's making a game called Natural Selection 2. Um, they're doing something really, really different, and I don't want to like pimp them more than I already have, but it's coming from a company of eight developers. And, and if people remember, Bungie was eight developers. They came out of Chicago. They were bought up by, well, first by uh, Apple, but then by, um, but by Microsoft. But that innovation, I think, was spurned off the fact that you had a bunch of ideas guys with new ideas about a genre that was severely lacking in the console market. FPSs were never done right. Uh, They were only for PC and Bungie found a way to get it on uh, a console that made sense for players. And I don't know that that they can do that anymore. I don't know that uh, a company that's, they got their, their head too far in it. You know what I mean? There's too many cooks in the kitchen. There's too many, I mean, however many metaphors you want to use. They're just, there's just no way they're going to be able to do it. I mean, do you think, a company like that can do something, LB? Or you think it's, I don't know. What do you think? Is there a comment on that, you think? Uh, I'm just, you know, sticking with the thing. It, it just, can it be done? Um, I'm not going to say no, it can never be done because anything can be done. But nowadays, I, I don't know. You've you've got people scared to try new things. They, you know, and I understand they want to make money. I get that. You know, it, it's a fucking business. Hello. Yeah, right. But, you know, NC2, you know, like you said, eight guys, guys that give zero fucks, you know, That's what they you don't need. have some huge friggin' VP behind right. them, or VC behind them, dishing, you know, $40 million to pump out their game. They don't give a fuck. They're going to give it a shot. You need zero fucks. That's what you're saying. The ma- the yeah. secret sauce, you've heard it here, everyone. LB knows how to make <laughs> the perfect game. Get eight developers in a room, and all of them at the same time give zero fucks. That's... <laughs> The key, if you will, to fan, and that will br- will build a better community. I think we can all agree to that. Okay, well, that's gonna wrap it up for this for today's show. Uh, I want to thank all you guys for coming out, talking about clans, talking about community. Um, we're gonna do a full thing on it. I'm gonna probably do a write up to talk to all the other people on Tool to Play about some of the things we were talking about uh, in in the threads on Tool to Play about clans. So if you go to Tool to Play right now and you check out the forums, especially an off topic. You'll see a ton of threads talking specifically about clans. Uh, If you want to play video games tonight, there is a Battlefield 3 soiree going on right now on the Tool to Play community server. Is it right now? It's right now, right? No, no, it's not right now. When is it? (laughs) (laughs) When is it? Help me out here. It's 9 p.m. Central. 9 p.m. Central. Well, it's technically right now. So an hour and a half from now. An hour and a half from now. Uh, anyway, thanks everybody for coming out and go over to the battlefield three servers on the Xbox 360 and play with a bunch of great 
awesome people. Uh, if you wanna... ser that oh, server's oh. up for another three months, right? Yeah, the server's up right now. Yeah, just got renewed. Don't forget about Thursdays with Deep. I was Thursdays getting to that, but... All right, never mind. But, you know, you just go ahead, interrupt. Thursdays, you can do what I'm going to start calling dinner with Deep. <laughs> you can do dinner with Deep every Thursday, play some Halo, hang out. Deep says he's going to be the savior of all communities, so you can hold him accountable for when 343 three screws that up. Last week was a lot of fun. <laughs> no, people say. had a lot of fun. It was a good time, yeah. Um, and then don't forget the land, November 9th through the 11th at Chicago. Uh, don't be a douchebag. Go to the Kickstarter, buy a ticket, go. Just go. I mean, so many people don't understand. If you go to the land, you will love everyone on the site. Right? No, true. probably not. But a large portion of them. Maybe not LB. And certainly not Hit, but most. <laughs> Thank you for watching, LB. Where can they hit you up on the Twitters to get twat on? You can twat me at, mm. uh, <laughs> at LBSUTK. Let me try that again. No, that's, at fine. that's fine. LB S U T K E on the Twitter. Hitman, where can they find you? And what and how do we say your last name again? We decided I can't remember. It's not very hard to say. Fukar? <laughs> Fucker. Roken. Not oh Roken. Oh, I can't read Canadian. God damn it. Fukar. <laughs> where can they, where Fukar. can they find you? <laughs> Uh, you can find me at Twitter at uh, i6 hitman and on my gaming live stream channel at twitch.tv forward slash i6 hitman and oh, on the tool to play Twitch channel as well. Terrible. Uh, you can find me at the Chicago Land November 9th through the 11th. So go there. Stop being a fucking asshole. If you don't go there, you can tweet me. You can twat me at dude I rock. D O O D I R O C K. And on that, we will see you guys next week. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Kisses. See you guys. Later. Peace. LB, your champion.